So apparently the Packers had a game in Denver on Sunday night, and this is why I drink. All right, Christian. Well, let's get into it. The camera Finally, settings. Huh? Yes, the camera settings have changed a little bit for you, but this is way easier for us. This whole show is built around technical difficulties as a play, but we might be on to something. We switched to your phone. Yeah. So the audio might be a little bit different. I'm going to see what I can do with that in post, but I can see you clear. I, I think we can hear each other. There's like very little lag and delay. So we can actually have a, a good conversation. So Bear with us this episode. We're going to get through it. We're going to uh, we're going to see how quality turns out. We're going to have some good conversations. A few channel updates I wanted to run through just real quick. Typically in the past, the show we kind of I decided we decided that we want to post it on Wednesdays. We're going to move it to Thursdays moving forward. It's going to be a little bit easier for these late night recordings on Tuesday nights throughout the day. Wednesday, I'll have some time to edit it and get it ready for post and then I would just say 7 a.m. every Thursday morning. I'll just schedule it so it automatically posts on YouTube. So that would be the plan moving forward. Just a slight little tweak. And especially with the regular season, literally just right around the corner, um, you'll have the content you know, before Thursday Night Football, before that next week kicks off. And we're even brainstorming some ideas right now as we speak about what we're going to be covering and how we're going to add a little bit of wrinkle to what the episodes will be. But for those of you that are checking out the channel for the first time, please hit that subscribe button, comment below. For those of you returning or watching, we appreciate it. We definitely appreciate it. Let's talk about Denver. Sunday Night Football. Did you watch the full game this time? Or did you did you, zo you zoned out as well? I had a hard time. Well, I had a hard time watching it. I was at home and had the ability to watch it, and I still had a hard time watching it. Yeah, so I tried to watch it um, as much as I could. Uh, like I told you before we started recording, uh, my family actually took home a brand new puppy on Saturday. So oh. we've, ha we've had, had a lot going on in the house. Haven't gotten a lot of sleep because it's a eight week old puppy <laughs> that has to get up. It's, it's like having a newborn baby. I, I've never, ha I've never, ha oh, it's a, it's a Pyridoodle. So okay. great white, great white Pyrenees mixed with a poodle. So it's got the curly, curly hair, but it'll be bigger, probably bigger than a poodle. It's like 75% poodle, 25% Pyrenees. So one of those manly but, dogs. <laughs> yeah, it's this, <laughs> it wasn't my, it wasn't my first no, choice in a dog, but I do agree with my wife that it's, it's shouldn't shed very much compared to our last dog. Yeah. So that's the, that was the big, the big sell for my wife on that one. But yeah, she's, she's great. She's a good dog, but she's an eight week old puppy. So I was very busy with that Sunday evening. And I believe, I think my wife was gone to start at the start of the game on Sunday. So I was like putting kids to bed and trying to make sure the dog didn't pee on the floor. And so I didn't get a chance to watch it very closely. I did kind of keep up with it on my phone and stuff like that. And it just was, I mean. It was abysmal. It, it was the stuff that I did get to watch was tough to watch. It was a tough. It was a tough game to watch. Thirty-one players inactive. All your starters on offense. All your starters on defense. So we didn't. I mean, that's twenty-two players right there, plus an additional nine with names such as Jordan Morgan, who that rookie first-round draft pick. We still haven't got a chance to see him perform in either of the first two preseason games. Marshawn Lloyd did not play either. And then a couple other names scattered out there throughout as well. So it's tough because there's after that Cleveland game, it's like, man, I really just want to see. Oh, Edgerton Cooper also didn't play. So there's, you know, three guys right there where I want to kind of see what we have out of them. For the most part, as training camp kind of wraps up here, I'm getting a sense that a lot of the nucleus that we had from last year is going to remain on this roster as well. But where, where are those added pieces going to fill in uh, along this roster? We've talked about safety in previous episodes, but you know, there's some, there's some big name draft picks that we have really no idea what we have or we're going to get. And I'm not even sure we're going to know 
after this up this final upcoming preseason game because I'm not sure if Lloyd's going to play. There hasn't been any announcements there. I'm not really sure what we're going to see. So we're kind of flying blind right here as far as one week to go in training camp. But yeah, it was a tough game. Denver was a tough game to watch. Two points is all they put up. A little fun fact for everyone listening. The Packers have only put up two points total for a game four times in NFL history. And I did have that statistic pulled up uh, here before. The last time was in 1985, where they lost in the preseason 10 to 2 against the New York Giants. And then it also happened in 1932 and 1937, where the last times the Packers only put up two points. Both of those games were against the Chicago Bears, and they won one of the games 2 to 0, and they lost one of the games 2 to 14. So it's very rare to only have two points. Not a lot of excitement at all that came from this game and it was it was just hard to i really wanted to see i mean let's kind of start with what i wanted to see was someone step ahead in this quarterback battle and unfortunately we did not get any any answers on what's going on for backup quarterback sean clifford goes six for 10 43 yards Finishes the game with a 30.4 quarterback rating. He did have an interception as well. He played the whole first half. And I text you, I think, maybe late second quarter, around halftime. And I'm like, man, it's not going to take much for Pratt to, you know, really wow us and step up and maybe take a shot at that that backup role. Well, Pratt comes in. He he fares a little bit better. 10 for 16, 52 yards and a quarterback rating of 67.7. But no points. No, no, nothing, nothing good. My question, should we be concerned about backup quarterback? I, I get it. It's not as long as Jordan loves healthy, it doesn't probably matter. But what do we what do we got? What do you think we got at backup quarterback? Will either of these two work? Are they going to make the roster? Yeah, I mean, one of the two of them will. I don't know that they'll, you know. I don't know that they'll get rid of both of them or put them both on the practice squad, but I think if the situation were to come up that the that Jordan Love gets injured and they're going to need someone to come in and finish the season, I I would think that they start shopping around for some veteran guy or some some backup with some other team, pick him up to finish out the season because it's pretty evident that neither of these guys are are the answer. It's the one thing that I, I didn't watch the whole game closely, but before we, we hopped on here, I was looking at the, at the stats and NFL.com runs, they run each drive for each team. And I was looking at each drive for the Packers. And obviously most of them were punt turnover on downs, punt interception, fumble, whatever. So obviously that's disheartening to see, but what what really stood out to me was how many yards they gained in that drive and majority of the drives, it was single digit. Yeah. It was awful. So it's, and, and it's not, it's tough to judge because we were not as privy to the Broncos starting lineup versus their second stringer. So I don't know what type, what, what level of defense that these guys were playing against, but even so, like you got to put up at least more than 10 yards a drive. They had to have averaged less than 10 yards a drive, which is yeah. crazy. Oh, so, so I'm looking at it was just, pretty sad. I'm looking at just the second half. So under Pratt, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven drives, and five of them were less than 10 yards. 10 yard drives. So not good. And the first half, one, two, three, four, five. I would say Clifford did a little bit better. There were five drives and only one of them was less than 10 yards, but the other ones were in that 10 to 20. So it's not, yeah, it, I get it. That first, I mean, specifically in that first half, the first quarter and a half, I would say you had your first string Broncos going against the second string Packers and they, all you were really looking for is to be competitive and to have some fight. I mean, the Broncos were not a good team last year by any means, and they got a rookie quarterback. We expected Bo Nix to play a lot of that first half, and he did. 
And we knew that he'd be going up against more of a second string or the second string versus the the starters. So I'm not really too surprised by the outcome that we lost. I, I am a little bit surprised that we just it was as big of a difference as it was and that we just couldn't even get into the end zone once. Um, yeah, I don't know what they do at quarterback. It's it's tough. I, I'm not really a big fan of any veterans that might be out there. I don't really know if that's the answer. I think both of these quarterbacks have upside. Um, Clifford has shown in the past that he can have big play potential. And one in interesting thing that came out of this is this is the first time in his career, high school, collegiate, and NFL, it's the first time he's never put up a scoring drive when he's played in the game. So maybe... It's a one-off thing for him, but we had we talked about some of the struggles that he had early on in training camp, and maybe when the lights come on, you know he's a different player. But I I don't know. He, he, I think he's excited to to take on the Ravens and maybe show that he can be the backup quarterback. Pratt, on the other hand, extremely young. He's the the rookie, the new kid on the block. I love. I will say, I think he's got hell of an arm uh, he holds the ball up high like textbook on on how you want to hold it as you're backing out and looking around the field i think he's got a great arm there's some accuracy issues which you have maybe from a young quarterback and some nerves but yeah i don't know it's it's not i'm concerned if jordan love gets hurt it's not going to be good hopefully he can stay healthy that no answers came from backup quarterback after after the the night in denver i'll just leave it at that yeah, and I mean, it it stood out to me as well. The defense, the uh, I mean, I was watching highlights, and the two two guys that are probably going to get majority of the carries for the Broncos just carved up the defense. I mean, I understand it was second string defense the Packers were were putting out there, but it's couldn't stop the run, couldn't stop them from scoring. It was was not pretty. All, all around. What's up with Zach Wilson being the third string quarterback on the Broncos? That's <laughs> man. It's it, it's pretty it's pretty sad. He was, I mean, when he was drafted by the Jets, he was you know the savior in New York. He was. He was going to be the guy, and just goose egged. And then they had to go back to him because of Rogers' injury last year. Yeah. And he, he, you know, he, he flashed a couple of weeks where he, he played well and pulled out a win and stuff like that. But to end up on a different team now and be third string behind a rookie Stidham who was in uh, New England for a while. And then Wilson sitting behind both of those guys, that's gotta be, that's gotta be tough. I mean, he's been getting paid, so yeah. well, can't this, complain too much. This could but. be his last season in the NFL with his it trajectory. Might, it might be. Didn't he have a comment like when Rodgers was coming to or going to New York? Yeah. Like, yeah, you gotta, you have to earn it or you're gonna have to compete against me. For yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the ball's on this guy. Isn't he, isn't there all that stuff going around the internet? He'd like banged another player's mom or something like that. <laughs> something. Yeah. I mean, I'd your knowledge with it is about as good as mine. There's something like that that went around. This was like shortly after he was drafted that yeah. that, that rumor mill started. Um, yeah. I mean, good on him, but yep. it's tough. I, these first round quarterbacks that don't make anything of themselves within those first three, four years, it's, it's not a it's a tough road back. There's not really a, a, a journey even in backup plan. They usually are these backups that you typically see are like second, third, fourth, fifth round quarterbacks that have just kind of been coasting the whole time. They've been consistent enough, but they don't necessarily always make the big plays when you need them. Yeah. I don't know. It's definitely wild. Well, I don't want to make this too long of a, a topic because I fear that we talk about the goddamn kicking competition way too much on this show and it's boring as fuck. But I have to talk about it because it's important. Two, it is important. And there's two reasons. The first is I thought I came out of the last episode, seemed like Greg Joseph had the lead. That son of a bitch got, got the first shot at kicking a field goal, the only shot. And that's what I wanted to mention was. 
The Packers turned down an opportunity at a 54-yard field goal to start the first drive of the second half and went for it on fourth down and didn't convert it. I felt like at that point they were already down like 2-20. to 20. I think it was 0-20 to 20 at that point, actually. I don't know why they didn't kick the field goal. Maybe they're trying to why. get... Okay, why? Tell me. Well, okay, so in a in a regular season game situation, I can I can see not going wanting to try and go for it on fourth down instead of settling for a 54 yard field goal in a preseason game where you are trying to determine who your kicker is going to be. The only reason you don't try to kick a 54 yard field goal is because you don't have a kicker that you believe can make that really. I don't, I, I think if they had faith in either one of those guys to make that field goal, they would have, they would have, LaFleur would have ran them out there. It's a, it's for practice. It's a game situation where you put the pressure on him and see how he does. The only, in my mind, the only reason why they didn't is because they didn't have faith in either of them to come close to making it. Well, isn't that why you have them kick it though? Cause you want to start to determine who can make some of these kicks and i get it you can practice kicks all day and practice all you want and speaking of which they did that on tuesday and just so you i don't know if you saw this this stat line or not carlson went three for four on tuesday making from 41 45 and 33 joseph went one for four on tuesday not good not good and then their their other guy they brought in a week and a half ago two weeks ago alex hale he went three for four so at, at this point, Joseph mi- misses that kick on in Denver. Joseph was not a great kicker in Minnesota. I, I think he was the kicker, was it three years ago, where Packers were playing the Vikings that went into like overtime, and those kickers were missing like game winners left and right. Do you remember that game? It was late October. Yeah, I do. I do remember that. It made for a pretty intense game. Oh, it was intense. Yeah. And they they had a chance to win it at the end of regulation, missed it. It went into overtime. Both teams had a possession. Crosby missed a kick. Joseph missed a kick. And it ended in a tie. So I'm (laughs) how how quick the tables can turn. I think Joseph is out. Oh, how the turntables turn well. Yes, I agree. Joseph is out. It's got to be a Carlson thing, but I think I think you have to. I think at that point on sa- on Sunday night, you're already out of the game. You're already losing. You have positions and things you got to figure out, and maybe they were trying to figure out what they had at backup quarterback, and that's why they decided to go for it in the hopes that they could extend a drive. Maybe that's what they were trying to figure I out. I can see that. But there's they had a few very little opportunities where they got the ball across midfield and could kick a field goal. I felt like if you're going to figure out if these guys can kick it under pressure in a stadium with a bunch of people watching them, that was your opportunity. And for whatever reason, they passed on it the first time, and then they send Joseph out there for the, the only kick. And boy, that wasn't it wasn't even close. It was wide right, and I was like, what? Are you Between the quarterbacks not being able to move the ball and then the kicker completely shanking it i was i turned to my wife and i'm like we got problems we got i mean we thought we had all this depth and we might have depth at certain positions but (laughs) there's some positions we don't have there's some serious question marks and that's why i drink that's why i drink yeah yeah drink (laughs) heavily during a game like that that's for sure i mean ultimately it's a preseason game i don't know that that we should get too Two down on the team. I know it's not fun watching the Packers perform that way, but it's because there's reasons for it. The the first team guys were all not even suited up, so it's tough to to get two down on them. Last preseason, we had players that were jumping out pretty consistently that were making a name for themselves, and with only a week to go in training camp. We have literally one more practice, which will take play, place on Thursday when this video comes out. That's a joint practice with the Ravens. And then there is a game on Saturday night. And then Tuesday, August 27th, that's that's cuts. We're down to 53 men rosters and practice squads. So literally, just within the next couple of days, we're going to figure out what this roster is going to shape up to be. Well, I don't really know if anybody has jumped out in preseason and it's just super I don't know if it's just recency bias where I'm thinking that 
usually there's someone who does make a name for themselves. Like we've seen in the last year or two. I haven't seen really anyone make a name for themselves. And I think that's what I was getting to earlier with that nucleus. It, it kind of seems like we know what our team is going to be. It's just going to, it's, it's just going to be a couple names, maybe four or five new names on this roster outside of our draft picks, which they're kind of given to be a roster spot. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not Pratt, maybe, maybe not Kalen King. I actually have no idea. I should probably dive into that a little bit more, but would you agree that there, we had Valentine and Valentine, we had like names pop up and I don't know if that's just because we had a younger roster and we lost players and we were kind of rebuilding and it just seemed like we were looking for these people, but it just doesn't seem like anybody's jumped out this preseason where you're like oh, that, Oh man, that's the guy. Or maybe it's related to injuries. Maybe because Marshawn Lloyd hasn't played that we haven't been like, no. Oh man, we got a brand new shiny toy. It's been a weird mm-hmm. preseason after two games. It's just nothing, nothing's jumped out so far. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It's been it's been kind of goofy, and and I think injuries does have a huge, huge part to play in it. Yeah, Lloyd specifically was the would be the one that I wanted to see more of, and obviously we haven't gotten to because of injury. I don't think that that. I I think the the players that that sat out tells a story too. I mean, AJ Dillon didn't suit up last week. We had a big conversation on if we thought he would. If we thought he was going to be with the Packers after training camp to start the regular season, I think it's telling that he didn't play means that his roster spot is not in question. We probably same with, same with Jordan Morgan. I know Jordan Morgan came back to practice this week or last week, but still didn't play in the preseason game. I mean, would have liked to see some of him, but maybe they've seen enough from him in practice that they. They didn't want to risk re-injury or something like that. So yep. I think who didn't play is telling as well. Well, and it seemed like we, we've talked about Isaiah McDuffie is going to probably, he's going to get that starting mm-hmm. nod over Edridge and Cooper. I think Lloyd not playing probably, I mean, that obviously helps Dylan's cause in this case. I think at that point with the regular season less than, or just a, pretty much two weeks away, you're going to have to, you're going into the regular season with, Jacobs at running back and then Dylan probably right behind him because you're not going to have any playing experience Mm -hmm. for Lloyd and that's just going to have to build into it and yeah Wilson didn't shatter any records 13 carries for 41 yards averaged 3.2 which is okay but yeah Yeah. it's it's tough it's it's been a it's been a weird training camp outside of the performance on Sunday night against Denver the Packers also had that joint practice against Denver on Friday they, they kind of got their asses handed to them on Friday in that joint practice. That translated into what we thought or what I think LaFleur was hoping would be a bounce back effort on Sunday that did not come to fruition. I don't care that they won or lost. Don't doesn't bother me what whatsoever. I was watching a lot of the body language, though, throughout that game. I was surprised and I made a I made a note of it that I want to talk about. It. Matt LaFleur seemed jovial for the most part throughout that game. You know, late in that fourth quarter, they're showing the sideline and players are laughing and stuff. And I get it. It's preseason. The game doesn't matter. But I don't really know. That that almost kind of felt a little bit red flag-ish to me. And I don't know specifically why. Uh, Matt did come out after immediately after the game and say, you know, I wish the players would have played harder. It's not the standard that we hold. Only to kind of reverse on that on Tuesday's press conference and say after looking at the tape, they did play hard all the way from that first snap to the end. I would have liked, I don't know, it. I don't really know what kind of point I'm trying to make other than it stood out to me that either they're super confident in what they have with their starters that he could be jovial and just kind of go with the flow and it didn't get to him too much in a preseason game. Is it confidence or should it be a red flag that maybe we're too confident and this could be a sign of things to come? I don't know. Because they're very confident. Mm -hmm. And we're confident. I mean, as Packers fans and whatnot, we're we're talking. This is a great opportunity to make a deep playoff run and and going to the Super Bowl Mm -hmm. sort of a season. So. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say. I don't I don't know which which of the two 
it is either because it's, I mean, like you said, we have the, the team has confidence. We have confidence in them. We're excited about the season. You've been on sports teams before, like when the, yeah, like when the starters are out or, you know, you kind of know you're the better team and you're getting your ass kicked. You don't let it, you don't let it affect you. Right. Is that what we were seeing or were we seeing a team that might be overly confident that got their ass kicked in practice? And I think maybe it's the practice thing. They didn't, they didn't show up to practice. They didn't show up to the game. Are you, are you going to show up? Are you just, are they going to let them take it from you? And and Matt LaFleur does a great job of coaching these guys and keeping their mindset and and Mm tact, but it almost, it it worries me a little bit. Not so much the score. Yeah. But the body language. Yeah, I can see that. And I feel like if it is a overconfidence thing, I feel like LaFleur can correct that. The way he runs that locker room and the, the, the vibe that he wants to set in that locker room. I think if it is an overconfidence issue, I think he can fix that. But I don't know. I th- I would lean more towards it was the the first thing that you said about the the first team was sitting out and they're confident in their abilities, so they were laughing and joking on the sideline because the preseason game didn't matter as much, and they're confident in going into the season with the team that they have. I think I lean more towards it being that than an overconfidence issue, but only time will tell. I hope I hope they're not being overconfident and come out flat to start the regular season. But well, you got them losing that game, so it won't be, it won't hurt you too much. That's true. That's true. <laughs> hey, man, you know I. It was just a gut feeling. The hey. Packers have. All the ability to win yourself. that first game. I'm just saying. Oh, um, I do. I do have to defend myself. Sounds like. All right. So one last preseason game to go. They finally get to, they, they get to host a joint practice against the Ravens. They get to host a game at Lambeau Field on Saturday noon kickoff, which is a good thing. That m- most of their first half games of the regular season are going to be noon kickoffs, so they'll kind of get a feel for what those preparations look like. No definite plan and this might change by the time this video comes out but as of tuesday there's no window into the future on whether or not the starters are going to play i think it's going to boil down to how that joint practice goes do the packers need to play their starters um at all before we head to brazil in two weeks or do you think that three offensive possessions is good enough to come out of the gates firing and eight defensive possessions is strong enough for our defense to take on Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, and the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, I don't know. That's really tough to say. On one hand, you'd like to see them get at least a drive or so in just to to stay loose and keep the rust off um, before going into the Brazil game. On the other hand, you know, you don't want there to be some freak injury that derails the entire season just because you're getting your first team guys a few reps before before the end of the preseason. So it's it's tough for me to decide what I want to see, but yeah. I guess I would lean more towards not playing the starters would be my preference just to prevent that chance of injury. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I would think that they're probably not going to play the starters. But if I had a preference, if I had to put my vote in there, I, I would want to see the starters. That that week one matchup is not no joke. It, it's mm-hmm. you're playing a very good team. A team. What did they start the season last year? Eleven and zero, twelve and zero, eleven and zero. They were remember. hot. Yeah, they kind of fizzled out, but oh, they did for the, the season, but. Um, but they, I mean, just a couple of years ago, they were a Super Bowl team, Super Bowl in the Super Bowl. So it's not like, I mean, and it's essentially the same team, same, same starting quarterback, same weapons around him. The defense is always really solid. So it's, it's still pretty much pretty close to the same team that they were when they were in the Super Bowl two or three years ago. So they're all, I mean, every year they're going to be a competitor with that team. So it'll, it's definitely a tough game. 
Well, maybe he takes the approach of you start your defense and not your offense. I mean, for the most part, outside of Josh Jacobs on the offensive side of the ball, that offensive line is going to remain the same. Jordan Morgan's not going to. I'd be surprised if he starts in week one just with his little playing <laughs> experience in preseason. I assume they'll just kind of rotate him in throughout the first couple of games. But you got the same nucleus of wide receivers, same tight end, same quarterback. Josh Jacobs, I think, can probably pick up enough. He's a veteran player, can probably pick enough up enough in the preseason. That defense, I think I would like to see a little bit more action together on the field. Same thing, a lot of similar players come coming back from year over year, but different scheme, different coaching style. Not that yeah. they're going to show all these extravagant new schemes or anything, but right. just from a communication standpoint, probably would like to see the defense out there for a series or two. I, I don't know. I, I, I guess... In injuries can happen at any point. We could start week one and lose a player, and that could derail the entire season and week one of the regular mm -hmm. season. It, I, I guess I would just be, I'd rather be more prepared to come out and compete in that week one. I'm not saying that they won't by not starting any of their, their guys on Saturday, but I would like to see a few more reps, regardless of how practice goes on Thursday, because it's, it's going to be crucial for. It's going to be playoff seeding. That's a playoff seeding type of matchup, and there's only a couple of them throughout the season. Uh, Eagles, Lions, Niners. That's probably it. I don't can't think of too many other NFC teams that we play off the top of my head. So it, those are, in theory, those should be games that would be nice to win and not come out struggling. Struggle bus. Yeah. 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 We'll see. We'll see what the head honcho decides. We'll know soon enough, is what they say. Mm -hmm. Around the NFC North, we'll hit some of those topics. Speaking of starters that have not played a whole lot, I'll start with Detroit. They haven't started a, a, anyone. <laughs> okay, they've had a few starters, but no Jared Goff. Like none of their main stars have played in a preseason game. Be interesting to see. I'd imagine Dan Campbell will throw them out for a series for their last preseason game. Do you think that? I mean, it's essentially the same thing as the Packers. Do you think absolutely sitting your starters throughout the entire preseason will have a negative effect in week one? Or are they professionals and they can just get past that altogether? No, I think it makes a difference. I think if they, I mean, I know the Packers starters haven't played much. I mean, but at least, at least they got a little bit in <laughs> zero, zero preseason snaps for the starters. It just seems, it seems like you're bound to have some rust to shake off that first week. And ultimately it depends on how long it takes to shake the rust off. Does it take a series? Does it take a whole game? Does it take two games? Like it's, you have, you're leaving yourself a lot of question marks about how your regular season is going to start without putting any of those guys out there in the preseason. So. I mean, if they don't, if they don't play any starters, I would, you know, we probably in our schedule prediction, I probably had the Lions win in their first, first game. I would question that yeah, if they, they don't play any of their starters in the preseason. They open up Sunday night against the Rams. So Ooh, I would, yeah, <laughs> I would think that Dan Campbell would put some, some time in for these guys in their final preseason game, but. Yeah, the Packers tried this with Rodgers. It was kind of a mixed bag result when he would not play preseason games. I think you you want that cohesion. You want to get it, it's every game matters. There's just so few games. You get 17 opportunities to make your you know seeding in the playoffs and losing even week one of the the regular season can can haunt you later on and where whether you're at home or you're on the road and a wild card division whatever the case may be so outside of the lions we look let's head over to minnesota we talked about it as speculation last week but sure as shit jj mccarthy 10th overall pick for the minnesota vikings i mean if they weren't down enough with how low we thought that they were gonna their record was gonna be <laughs> they're really feeling it now by losing J.J. McCarthy. He's out officially for the entire season. I had a conversation with a coworker today, actually, and it's kind of, I don't know, I look at it as kind of a blessing in disguise because you take a rookie quarterback 
it's hard to find a lot of success. The CJ Strouds of the world's are a dime a dozen, and that doesn't typically happen. So we were predicting when JJ McCarthy was healthy and Sam Darnold's going to be their starting quarterback, that they were still going to have a down year is probably at best. And this isn't even what we predict. This is higher what we predicted at best a five and 12 season, right? So this is kind of a blessing in disguise. I think if you're Kevin O'Connell and the coaching staff over there, because expectations for the season have just essentially evaporated. There's no expectations anymore. You can go out there and you, you can win seven games and wow the world, or you could finish with two wins and it's okay because you just lost your, your fresh draft pick before the season even started. I think this actually, I'm trying to find the silver lining for Viking fans. It's going to be a long season. However, if it's a long season, you end up with another top draft pick. I think Kevin O'Connell is a pretty solid coach too for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, I think it kind of buys him another year, kind of regroup everything next off season and try to hit the ground running next year. But man, what a blow. Uh, talk about yeah. playing your starters in the preseason. There's your example right there on maybe, maybe you shouldn't. Yeah. And I mean, we talked about it. We didn't expect McCarthy to be the starter to, to begin the season, but in that type of situation, a lot of times what, what you see happen is the veteran guy starts off the season. As soon as sh struggles show up, you, they throw in the, the rookie guy that all the fans want to see. And so I, I'm sure fans are, are more disappointed than the organization themselves. Fans wanted to see JJ McCarthy come in at some point this season and see right. what he could do. And now they're not going to get an opportunity to see that. One thing, one th situation that pops into my head that was similar to this was the 49ers a few years ago with Trey Lance. Trey Lance was a high draft pick and he was the next, he was the next wonder boy was supposed to be the next big thing. Got they injured. Up, they don't do, didn't they? Was he right? Yeah. Like number yep. two overall pick. I can't remember what, Overall, he was, but first yeah. round, they moved up to get him. They were, right. I mean, he was the talk of the draft. And then he gets injured. I think, I think he made it a couple games into the regular season, but he gets injured. And that was back when Garoppolo was still there. Garoppolo comes back in and takes over as the starter again. Then he gets injured. And then you get Brock Purdy, another rookie, Mr. Irrelevant, comes in and steals the show. And then Trey Lance, Trey Lance is now a backup in Dallas. So yeah, you see that, that type of, it's a similar situation, you know, JJ McCarthy's the fresh new rookie that they drafted They had expectations that he may, you know, play some this season. Well, now he's not going to play at all. And what's to stop them from drafting another quarterback next year or, you know, someone, someone else, another quarterback on their roster. Um, starts to shine and he doesn't even get a shot next year. So it's, it's very interesting. It's not an ideal situation for, for any of them. Well, it creates a ton of plot lines depending on how the season shakes out for them. Yeah. If they end up with a one or two overall pick, let's say the season is just, just absolutely disastrous. Do they trade, you know, their first overall pick and because mm -hmm. they have belief in JJ and then they, start building some depth somewhere else throughout the the roster or do to your point, do they draft the uh, top tier quarterback and now you have two young studs and now they're competing. It could create a bunch of plot lines for sure. As, as the Vikings move on throughout the next couple of seasons, what do you think this does to the other JJ in Minnesota? What, what kind of season is he going to be like angry Devonte Adams in the next, you know, by week eight saying, I, I just want to win football games and I don't care about stats anymore. Is, can you see that coming? Cause I kind of, I can kind of see that coming. I, I can see him. Yeah. He got paid. He's the highest paid, but Sam Darnold's not going to be good enough to feed him and give him the yards and the attention and stats that, you know, that he kind of needs. That's my, yeah. opinion, my opinion. I mean, Sam Darnold's, I mean, he's been around the league for a while. He's not, he's not, great but he's better than what they were dealing with last year and justin jefferson still put up pretty big numbers last year i don't think it really matters who's throwing him the ball i think he's gonna i think he's gonna put up 
high. I, I think he had two games last season where he was fairly close to 200 yards receiving, something like that. So do you, and would you say he had like Nick Mullins throwing to him yeah. and whatever other quarterbacks they had last season. He looked so good. I don't know that it Nick Mullins. Yeah. He looked good this last weekend, actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you this then real quick. Justin Jefferson or Devonta Adams? Who would you, who would you want on your roster? Uh, Justin Jefferson for sure. Is it because of age? Or or talent, yes. both. Okay, because I think Adams is going to be he's going to lose his goddamn mind this this next season. <laughs> Garner Mishu did not look good over the weekend. Aiden O'Connell is not the answer. I mean, I thought of that because you you had mentioned that Sam Darnold will get him the ball and and he'll get his catches. I I don't know. I. I you didn't get that out of Devon with Devonte last year, and that was with Garoppolo starting. That was with Aiden O'Connell coming in there. Gardner Mishu is that weird guy where he can go for 450 yards and five touchdowns one week, and just seven interceptions the next week. So we're, we kind of know what we got out of him. Yeah, I don't. I think any of those pre Madonna wide receivers are going to have a tendency to get upset if they're not getting the ball accurately thrown yeah, away and i i don't think sam guess, darnold's gonna make him happy no yeah going back to your question y your specific question yeah yeah i i definitely yeah. first see i definitely first see jefferson making some noise at some point in the season about wins or not getting the ball enough or something like that i can definitely foresee that but ultimately i i think he's still he's still gonna put up decent numbers he's still gonna be one of the top receivers in the league, no matter who's throwing to him. You get in week, what is it, week three? You get Alexander doing the, and then the, you know? <laughs> yeah. Game over. He's going to lose. I've been guys. seeing a lot of, <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of Facebook posts and videos and stuff like that, recounting that game where Jair shut Jefferson down for his worst game ever in his career or whatever. But, yeah, hopefully that hopefully that happens again. The other thing to consider is matchups throughout the season. I mean, we don't know what all these defenses are going to look like. It's very easy for a team to have a solid pass defense last season, and then they come in this season and they've lost a couple of guys or scheme is a little bit different, and the pass defense is significantly worse than it was in the in the past. So it depends on their matchups as well. You could still see some monster games out of out of a guy with the talent that Jefferson has. Yeah, that's a good point. Great point. Bears. I don't know if you caught any of those highlights. Probably not. Maybe did you come? Yeah. I know you didn't I, watch I, the game. I saw. Okay. I saw the highlight. And I'm uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to go ahead. You you go ahead with what you want to say about it. I gotta collect myself and decide how I wanna tackle <laughs> this this topic. Well, I would say that I pride myself on having a good instinct with players. Now, you clearly, if we want to pull out the receipts again on Jordan Love, you clearly did. I was never really against him per se. I was, it was the situation, right? It was NFC Championship. Why are we drafting a quarterback? Rodgers is still okay, right? But I have a pretty good gut instinct with players. I used to buy jerseys. I have an Adams jersey. Martinez, remember this guy? Yeah, fucking Blake Martinez. He was a rock solid beast. Love this guy. Savage. He was all right for a while, right? He just got they they finally let go of him. I got a Jared Cook jersey over there. They should have resigned him. They should have never let him go. Anyway, there there might be something there with Caleb Williams, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> I think if you're a Bears fan, let me just say this. If you're a Bears fan, you have, I think you finally have a reason to be excited. Do I think they're a playoff team this year? Hell no. That's not happening. That rivals, I'm confident, super confident by that. But I, he has, he, it's going to be fun to watch him throughout the season. I, I usually don't care to watch the Bears games because they were typically just so bad that it made no point to watch them. But I think that 
with Caleb Williams on that roster. It's a young team. It's I think Eberflus has some pretty good coaching tendencies. It could be a fun fun team to watch. And I don't know. They got me second guessing they're going to be as bad as what I thought they would be. I guess is where I stand at. They're three and zero in the preseason. It doesn't mean a whole lot. Caleb Williams even playing the first preseason game, but. There's a lot of energy in that team, and they're excited. They believe again, and they feel like they can win games. And that's that's half the battle right there is going into these matchups with feeling like you actually have an opportunity to win a game. Yeah, yeah. Well, so one thing that you 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 just said, the Bears being a young young team. I mean, I guess I don't know about the defense, but the offense. Really, the only young guy is Caleb Williams himself. The Odunze, the, the guys that they what's that? Odunze is that how you pronounce it? Their wide receiver. Okay, yeah, sure. Yep, their rookie wide receiver. Sure. Okay, so you got quarterback and a rookie wide receiver, but outside of that, you got Keenan Allen, who there is a to me to me there's an age issue. He's he's been in the league for a long time, and yes, he's been very good but he's also been injured a lot the last couple of seasons. Yep. DJ DJ Moore, he's not necessarily, he's, I don't know how long he's been in the league. He's, I believe he's younger than Keenan Allen. So his, his age isn't, he isn't like a issue for me, but he's not, you know, a young up and coming guy. You, you know what you've got with him. He's a solid player. DeAndre Swift, he's been in the league for a while and has injury issues. So as far as them being a young team and up and coming, Really, it's just Caleb Williams and I don't even know how I can't remember how to pronounce his last Od- 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 Odunze. Odunze? I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, but anyway, for me, so what turned me off to Caleb Williams, like I don't really question his talent. I I can certainly believe that he's a very talented quarterback. What changed not necessarily changed my mind, but what made up my mind about my opinion on him was during, during the draft combine. So he, everyone's talking about him being the potential first round draft pick. And he showed, he went to the combine. He was there, but he decided not to participate into any, in any of the drills that they want, that, teams wanted him to basically he just showed up there to talk to the media and talk about how great he was and then not do anything there oh they can they can see me at my pro day if they want to see what i can do like his his he's a douche the yeah the drama that he brings is what turned me off to him and what makes me believe he's not going to be this major success that everyone thinks he is i think I think his attitude, I think the drama that he brings is going to tear apart that locker room at some point and things are going to fall apart. His talent, I don't think is necessarily the question. It's his attitude and what his teammates think of him. Another point about that, their last preseason game. So one of the big highlights was, was a play where he was, I believe, rolling out to his left through off balance and hits, I think it was their rookie wide receiver, not quite for a touchdown, but right near the end zone. It was a very good throw. It was a very tough throw. Sorry, my voice is doing something goofy. So yes, it was a very good throw. It was a tough throw. It was impressive. But then later on, I think yesterday, I saw a video where someone had pointed out that Bryce Young, the Panthers quarterback, he was a rookie last year, really struggled. The Panthers did not do well last season. Yeah. There was a clip of Bryce Young making that exact same throw. Like they put him side by side. The throw was almost exactly the same. And Bryce Young obviously had a very rough season last year. It remains to be seen if he turns that around this year. But a lot of people are, a lot of Bears fans, a lot of Caleb Williams praisers are saying, oh, look at this throw. This was an awesome throw. Yes, it was, but other guys make that throw too and don't have don't have success in the NFL. So it'll be, I don't know. 
I don't know what to think. Well, I still don't think that pans out, but. Your hesitations or your reasoning is exactly where I was and maybe still am, but I for sure thought there were character flaws across the board with this guy, that he would be a locker room distraction, that he would be too self-centered, that the whole fingernail painting and it's all about me. He was at, I, I mean, there were rumors that he would not go to Chicago if they drafted him for the longest time. And then that kind of swirled around where he was like, okay, I'm going to go to Chicago. Like he bought into that idea before the draft started, but for a long time, that wasn't a thing. So yeah, there, there seems to be an underlining character thing that I'm right there with you. This could hold, this whole thing could implode, but from watching them and I watched the first half of the bears matchup on Saturday, I think the game was, it seems like there's an energy around this team and that their teammates do believe in him. It's very rare for a, a rookie quarterback to come in there and have that type of presence in preseason. Usually you got to kind of go out there and prove it, but it seems like, I don't know, there might be something there more so than what I thought. I'll just put it that way. And that's why I wanted to bring it up is that it, it has me questioning if they, they, it could be what, what's the not boom or bust, but is that how it goes? Boom or bust? whatever that saying is, yeah. it, it's, it seems like one of those situations where it, it could go really, really well, or this thing is going to be an absolute dumpster fire. And I will be right there to watch the entire thing go down. <laughs> I think it's going to be week to week. Honestly, I think that I think there will be games where they're firing on all cylinders and looking good and, and looking like a team that could make a playoff run or whatever. There'll be people making those type of comments, but then, the next week, it may be, as you say, a dumpster fire. Regardless, I, I hope Rogers stays healthy because that makes Jets games a lot more fun to watch. Bears games are going to be a lot more fun to watch with Caleb Williams over there. That's I guess that's where I'm coming from. There's other teams that I have a little bit more interest in just because of some of the storylines and, and drama around what's going on in those organizations. You want to knock out some trade rumors real quick before we put a wrap on this? It was some of your your contribution to the the show notes <laughs> <laughs> my one contribution to the notes yeah i just was i just was curious your thoughts i don't i don't put any i don't think there's any validity to it but there's all off season there's been rumors going around about the first one was brandon ayuk of the 49ers he's um trying to get a contact contract extension and hasn't put anything together yet. So there were some rumors about the Packers possibly looking to trade to get him in Green Bay. And now the mo more recent one is CD Lamb out of Dallas. Same situation, looking for a contract extension, isn't, isn't at training camp because of it. I don't foresee either of these guys necessarily being available. I think both of those teams are going to get something done, but there's tons of social media talk about the potential of the Packers making a trade offer. And the main one that I'm seeing is, is either Ayuk or CD lamb for Christian Watson and a couple of draft picks or something like that. Again, I don't see any validity to it. I don't think that either of them happen, but I was curious what your thoughts were on those, those rumors. And if you would like that to happen, like if that were to happen, would you be happy about it? Would you be, upset by it would you just be confused by it okay i'll answer the second part of that first if the packers traded for cd lamb yeah i'd be excited by that if they gave up watson and a second round draft pick and got cd lamb i don't know how the hell i don't like the contract that's going to come with that so that wouldn't have right. any but if the packers are going to do it they're going to obviously have that half of it figured out brandon Ayuk, i could take it or leave it i don't know i Ayuk doesn't do much for me. CD Lamb does something for me. I think he can be a true one where he'll go up and make contested catches and him and Dobbs and Reed and Kraft and Musgrave would be a better offense than what we have with Watson just because there's so many question marks about Watson's health. But none of it, let me get to the real point. None of it matters. And I, maybe I get sucked into it more because I'm only in Packers fan groups and I'm sure if you're in a Carolina Panthers fan group or a New York Giants fan group, there's probably all these fans that give the rumor mill a little swirl and memes pop up on the, on the newsfeed and people get rallied around. But that might be commonplace. But I don't 
buy it one bit. And especially if you hear that there's trade rumors going around, it's definitely not happening. I challenge you to tell me of one trade that's happened in the last 15 to 20 years that you saw coming. We didn't see Josh Jacobs coming. That came out of left field. Xavier uh, McKinney was like a hope and dream that, yeah, we needed a safety, but there's no way that they're going to go out and get the best available safety in free agency this last year. Julius Peppers, didn't see that coming. Charles Woodson, didn't see that coming. Zadarius Smith, didn't see that coming. Preston Smith, didn't. We don't ever see it coming. And it even goes back to our uh, defensive coordinator, right? We had all these big names flashing on the screen of who we're to take for defensive coordinator. Who did they take? Some no-name head coach out of Boston College that none of us knew anything about. The Packers do not buy into this. I, I am adamant about it, that when I see these rumors, I sweep it under the rug because it's never going to happen. And that's honestly what I think of these. Can you, can you try to name me a, a rumored trade or a free agent signing that they actually went out and got? I think the closest we got was J.J. Watt, only because he was a Wisconsin Badger, and it was like... Mm -hmm. Oh, they might go get him at the end of his career. But it I never, wanted that one so bad. Yeah, it never I wanted that one to happen. That would have been great. We could have just a one it would have been awesome deal. Yeah, perfectly fine. Yeah. It's no, just, I don't. It doesn't happen. I don't buy never. into it either. I mean, there was a long period of time where the Packers didn't even. They didn't even. Get guys out of free agency or make any trades. They just strictly went to the draft. It never you would always think, oh, they need to try and get this guy in free agency. Oh, they need to to trade for this guy or something like that. And it just would never happen. But yeah, I don't, why would they? Why would they with what the team that they have right now? I mean, there's, we've talked about it. There's analysts talking about it, how, how solid this wide receiver room is. And you don't know who is going to have the big game. It's going to be a huge issue for defenses. So why would you? try to why would you lose draft picks and a guy that's been on the team for a couple of years now why would you do that just for some some big name wide receiver i mean right. yeah i'd be i like you said if cd if it, the cd lamb one happened sure i'd be excited absolutely but i don't i would be a little upset that they did it because i would have been i'd be upset about the loss of the draft picks yeah i, I this this upcoming season could reshape my entire outlook on yeah. what to think about wide receivers because I don't for we've always had a, a true number one and we go back to a Donald driver a Greg Jennings Jordy Nelson to Adams we've always kind of had that true number one with a good secondary wide receiver and then it just kind of is maybe a pop-up game here and there by whoever that third and fourth string is there we've talked about it before we don't need to spend too much time on it but there's four or five wide receivers that can play very well we got tight ends that are up and coming. If this works out in 2024, I don't know if the Packers ever look back. And that's the problem with taking on, yes, I like CeeDee Lamb's talent. I don't like his, his price tag. But do you really need someone? How much better is he truly than what any of these individual receivers can be at any given point? I, 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 that's, there's just a quantitative thing there that I just cannot wrap my head around. He's good, but is he? Did, I don't. I don't see it. I, I just don't see paying a guy an extra fifteen million dollars than the next receiver on the roster because he makes a couple more catches. I don't know. It's. I, I hope it pans out well, and I could be eating my words if we if we end up in a really bad spot with wide receivers this year. Well, we might have to go out and get a, a true number one, but I think we see how this plays out because it worked out really well towards the last eight games of the year last year. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I don't, I don't buy into the rumors. I don't think that it's going to happen. I was just curious if you had seen that stuff and what you're, Oh, I see it. On it. So, Oh, I see it. I see it. Boy, do I see it. And people get really into that. Like, yeah, they're like, <laughs> Oh, this needs to happen. The Packers need to do this. Like, why? What, what are you talking about? Why does it do you, do... yeah. Oh, I guess it, I mean, we should wrap this up, but if, if you could yeah. trade any position on our roster for any other player in the league, do you have anyone in mind? <sighs> God. That's a tough one off the, off the cuff. My, I mean, my brain is going offensive line. Who's the, 
the the number one left tackle in the league plays for the 49ers yeah that's where my mind went to i still don't i don't know is, is it trent, trent something yeah trent something it's, it's it's going to really bother me that I don't know his name because he's a really good player, stellar player. Yep. So yeah, so he actually was he was a either a free agent or his contract was expiring or something like that. So there was like a chance that he goes somewhere else and and that was one where I was like, "Ooh, that'd be a really good one for the Packers to get." But then he re-signed with the Niners and god, it's going to bother the crap out of me. Is it that I can't Trent remember Smith? his name? Trent Smith? No, 49ers left tackles. Here we go. Get you. Here I don't have, I'd, I'd look it Trent up. Williams. Um, Trent Williams. Trent Williams. Williams. Yes. Yes. That, I mean, that was the first one that popped into my mind. I mean, sure. There's plenty of other guys that I would like to see in the green and gold, but the team that we have, I'm very confident in. I'm very excited about. So yeah, I'm sorry, but. A lot of- I, I Googled Trent Williams and an article that was posted today, 49ers urged to sign former Packers All-Pro David Bakhtiari with Trent Williams holding out. So Williams is still holding out. Just a little fun fact oh, for you. Um, interesting. Yeah, I wonder if, I wonder if Bak, Bakhtiari goes there. You know, yeah. So you're just talking about a free agent signing. So you, I mean, <laughs> you have to trade away a good player in order to get someone like Trent Williams, right? Probably. Yeah, well, yeah. I'd say I'm gonna I'm gonna go online here after we're done recording. I'm gonna put on Packers trade Rashawn Gary for Nick Bosa. <laughs> and we're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, TJ Watt, that'd be another good, cool one to get. Yeah, either Watt or Bosa would be on on the top of my list for Yeah. What to me, Watt more so than Bosa just because of the Wisconsin ties. That'd be That'd be super cool. Super cool. Well, super we've hit. Cool. We weren't sure what we were going to talk about. We managed to fill another hour recording. See, it doesn't take. Yeah, much. whenever. Yeah, whenever we t- we say, "Oh yeah, this one only take a half hour." There's not a lot to talk about. We definitely go an yeah. hour at least. We only need like four topics, and we can just talk, which is great. It makes yeah. it a lot easier to to prep and 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 whatnot. So, we'll wrap it up the video. We'll get this posted. I mean, here we are until next time thanks for checking out the video <laughs> hopefully this turns out pretty good post and then we'll figure out your the conversation was way easier tonight yeah it was yeah i think next week we'll try that other computer that i have see if that makes any difference if not i mean as long as the quality of this audio and video from my phone works maybe we maybe this is the way we roll for a while if it looks might, okay yeah. right but, but yeah everyone make sure to like and subscribe <laughs> follow us on face follow us on facebook got to get all the plugs in till next time we'll see you on the internet thanks for watching <laughs>